G'day everyone, James here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to install an aluminum window into a timber frame wall. Now what you'll see in the video is all the tools and equipment you're gonna need for the installation process. I'll take you through next door now and show you one of the windows that's already installed so you can see what it looks like. And then we'll come back, we'll break this down and we'll go through the whole process so you understand what's required to complete the job. All right, let's get started. So here's a quick look at what one of the windows look like installed. Now this has the plastic flashings that run around the side and the bottom. And on, you can see on the outside of our frame that we also have the wall wrap or sarking that's gone on. Now I'll run through the flashings in more detail when we actually do the install next door. But I just want to give you a quick look at what it looks like once it's in. We're going to have a plank cladding weatherboard that runs along here and into the side. And then we'll have a trim that just finishes that window off completely. But that now is basically ready for our plank cladding weatherboard. All right, now let's do the install. Okay, so far as tools go for the project, what you're gonna need is some plastic packers, various sizes from one mil, probably up to 10 mil, some screws for the sides of the timber reveals to put this into the stud work. So anywhere from 100 mil to 75 mil. I generally use the 75 mil eight gauge screw. A drill with a drill bit large enough to countersink the screw heads that are going to go in the side of the windows. A battery drill for screwing the screws in and then some various size levels. One that's probably long enough to go across the base of the sill, like in one full length if you can get it, and one that's long enough to go up there into your style to be able to get the packers right. So choose a range of various levels, whatever suits your requirements or window size. And that's it. Once you've got those uh, bits and pieces, you're ready for the install. You'll also need a Stanley knife to cut the wall sarking and a timber block and probably a ladder to stand on. A block around the same thickness as what your wall frame is. So if it's 90 mil or 70 mil, use the same size block. Put that out on the side of the sark. And we're gonna run that all the way around the sides, the top and the bottom. Gonna cut some angles on 45 degrees and then we're gonna fold that in. Now once you've got that cut back, it's simply a matter of nailing it or securing it back to the framework. Okay, next up, once the frame's prepared with the wrap put back inside it, we're gonna level the sill. So you find a level that's long enough to fit in there. And just grab some packers for packing this level, whichever way you need to go. So the idea with any window, once you get the sill packed level, like dead level, and then you get one of the styles packed plumb, you've got a perfect 90 degree angle where you can actually sit the window in, slide it against that, screw it into position, and then just pack the other side off. Now I'm actually pretty lucky here because we build all these wall frames by hand ourselves. This sill timber is actually dead level, so it doesn't need much packing. But let's say as an example, one of the ends dove right down like that. You might need to put maybe a, a three mil plastic packer under that end there. And then you may have to gradually work your way back then with maybe a, a one mil packer where it hits the level sort of up here somewhere. And just want to pack it probably about no more than about 800 millimeters apart, just so that the, win the base of the window has got something solid on it. But like I said, ours is nice and level, so I won't need to worry about that for now. The sill plumb, obviously you need that bubble nice and perfectly placed just between the lines there. Now when it comes to the side, and I should have said this for the bottom as well too, you want to check the distance between your frame opening versus your window size. Generally speaking, whenever you make up a frame or the, the manufacturer makes up a frame, they'll make it 10 mil bigger all the way around. So if your window is, let's say, 1800 millimeters long, then your frame opening size should be 1820, just to give it that bit of extra clearance. So what that means is when you're gonna pack this side level, you wanna pack that out about 10 mil. So you're putting an even distance between, an even gap for spacing on each side of the window. So that when it comes time to fitting, then you can fill around the window with something just to completely seal it off. So now the next step is to check that style for plumb. So I use one of my three mil packers, see if that works. Yep, three mil's perfect. So I've got my 10 mil and then I've got my three mil. So I'm gonna lay those over the top of each other. Do the same, just probably down about 80 to 100 mil from the top. And put a little soft sheet nail or a clout into that. Packer to hold it in position. 
and then once the level goes between the 10 mil at the bottom and the 13 mil there beautiful so that's spot on plumb so our window is now ready to go against that okay now i mentioned to you before i was going to talk about the flashings now most aluminium windows if they're going into a timber frame wall will have a, a timber reveal attached to them now that's so you can fix architraves on the insides and you've got something to fix through into your timber frame which holds the window into place now if that's the case Again, most windows these days come with the flashings already pre-installed on the timber jams. You may get some that don't, and if that's the case, you're gonna to have to install them yourself, which is really just a matter of getting this black plastic or snake skin, that they call it, in rolls of anywhere from 110 millimeters wide up to 230, and you will have to attach that to the reveal somehow. Now, but for this one, I'm not gonna go into that demonstration. I'm just gonna show you how to remove the flashing when it becomes stapled to the bottom. Take any staples out and then fold your flashings out so that they're ready to go. The way this works is the side flashing will run down over the bottom flashing. So I'll take that off on both sides and I'll show you a close up. So as a close up view, there's the aluminium, that's the actual win window frame and then it has the timber reveal that is attached to it. And the timber reveal is generally the width of the frame plus 10 millimeters for your uh, plasterboard or your plasterboard thickness on the inside so that when you come out here to the flashing that would line up with the outside face of your cladding that's going to go on and here's a look at the top you see i don't have any top flashing on it and the reason being is these windows sit tied up underneath our eave so we're going to have our eave that runs from our gutter and our fascia back along here and that will be completely sealed with the trim if this was exposed like in a gable end, then what we'd do is we'd have a flashing, make up a metal flashing that comes down, across and over the top there, just about 10 millimeters over to lap. And I may need to do that on a couple of other windows, so I'll show you that detail later if I can, but that's generally what would happen. Okay, so next I'm gonna position the window roughly where it goes, close to the opening. And now I'm gonna prepare where our screws go into the side here. Now, with this one where we've got packers in already, we just measure down the distance. We want to put our screws in just above that. So that one's at 80, and that one's at about 60. So it's just a matter of measuring, measuring up that distance. So now we're really just taking the drill with a drill bit big enough to hide the head. So this is the countersink bit. We're just going in enough to bury the head. We're not drilling all the way through. Just a little hole like that. Like I said, just so it'll hide the head of the screw once that goes into position. And that's it. Once you've got your four screws in there, you are ready to lift this into position. Just making sure that all your flashing's pulled out so that when you put it through the opening, your flashing doesn't get caught up. It can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes it's actually easy to install these from the outside so the flashing just pushes against it. But for this purpose, I'm just gonna put it in and slide it back. screw went in just below my packer there so that now is nice and solid. Then when we get to the other side it's simply a matter of screwing these off but finding some packers that will now fit between that gap that you've got left there. Mine work out pretty good to be a, a 10 mil packer that I can just slide between that stud and the reveal just to get it nice and firm. Like a 10 works pretty good there again. Just nice and firm, you don't want it too tight to bow it out, just to keep this seal nice and straight. And then again, just use your gauge to get your reveal flush. And screw that off, careful not to over tighten it because you may peel the reveal back a little bit from the window frame. So just nice and firm onto your packer. And that's it, nice and solid. Now you'll see here, I'll give you a close up, you can see why we countersunk those heads before, just so that screw's sitting behind it and it doesn't sit proud over your paint. And that is one nicely solid window. Now the only thing that you might do is if you had a, maybe a thinner reveal, I've got a more of a commercial grade aluminium uh, window frame here, so it's quite solid. If it had a thinner reveal, maybe you'd put a third fixing in the middle there, or if you had a window that was maybe greater than say 1200 high, if it started getting to like 1800 or obviously, two meters for doorways, then you're gonna have one bottom, probably one middle, or even a couple of middle, and then one at the top. Right, so there we go, all installed. Now the last thing you wanna check is just the operation to make sure that everything rolls smoothly and that your lock catches. But if you put everything in nice and level for your sill and plumb for your style, you've got that perfect 90 degree corner, then the window should operate 
magically. All right, now quickly take you outside and show you those flashings and how it finished off. So you can see here that flashing is just finished nicely against the side of our timber frame and our sarking there. And that's going to come down over the bottom of that flashing like I showed you before. But the idea is the cladding would come along and just finish inside that aluminium reveal there. Your boards would just lap over each other. And you continue all the way down over the bottom of this flashing here and then this last cladding board would come up underneath that secondary flashing there just to finish it off. So the whole idea is that aluminium fin is flush with your timber studs through here and everything just finishes off nice and neatly. There's something a little bit different in this room. This is the bathroom. These windows are not going to have any timber reveals on them. So it's just the aluminium only. And the reason I'm doing that is so that when these windows go in, I'm just going to have full high tiles going up and into the window. That way there's no timber reveal or architrave that you have to deal with. And same on this side here where we're going to have a big full panel of glass. This is all going to be picture framed in the shower. And if you had a timber reveal and an architrave around there, it just leaves an area that water can sit and the timber will just rot out over time no matter how good you treat it. Uh, it, you know, it just won't, won't hold up. Here's an example of a window that you would require to put your own flashing on. So these are the flashings I was talking about. It's the plastic or the snakeskin flashing. That's a 110 wide, and this is a 230 wide flashing. The reason I need to manually put this one onto this window is because this window doesn't have a timber reveal on it. This is going in a wet area in a bathroom. So the reason it doesn't have the timber reveal is so that they can tile straight into the actual window itself. So I'll show you the process of how this goes on and then I'll install that window. So starting with the bottom flashing first, you roll out enough so that it's the size of your opening plus an extra 150 or 200 millimetres on each end. Once you have the bottom flashing on, then the side ones come down and overlap that. Don't really need a top flashing on here because it's going to be sitting under the eave, but I will put a top flashing on just to demonstrate how it works. And the seal's already been packed level, so when it sits in, it should be sitting perfectly level. It's just a matter of popping it up into position. Fin for the window is now sitting over all those flashings, basically the same as the way it did on the windows where they had them pre-fitted. Same deal as the bottom, hold that out so it just overlaps that side flashing and then run it out. There we go, one window flashed that didn't have the flashings with it. Like I said, most windows, if they've got a timber reveal on them, will already have the flashing in place, but it's just this example where it doesn't have a timber reveal and you've only got the fins, this is how you might have to flash it. All right, so there you go, guys. You got to see one aluminium window being installed into a timber frame house. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up or like or subscribe if you're new to the channel. And don't forget to follow us on all our social media as well too, whether it's Instagram or Facebook, we're out there everywhere. So if I can give you any more tips or any advice, if there's any questions you have about the installation, please drop them in the comments below and I'll be sure to help out if I can. Thanks guys, until next time, I'll catch you later.